Hello scholars, Ms. Jeans here, and I'm going to help you with your first grade skills lessons. Today we're on skills unit 4, lesson 21. Our objectives for today are to sort some words with the past tense marker ED, read a new story and answer some questions, and we're going to write that draft of our descriptive paragraph. Let's start by looking at some past tense words. Some of my friends have been finding these to be a little bit tricky. I've already sorted them for us. Let me make this a little smaller so we can see the headings on my chart. So we've learned that even though it looks like ED at the end, it can sound different. Sometimes we hear id at the ending. Sometimes we just hear d at the ending. And sometimes we hear t at the end. It's really helpful to look at the verb first and then think about it in the past tense when we see that ed. For example, this first word has the verb start. I start my car. Now, if I think about that in the past tense, like yesterday, I would say yesterday I started my car. And then I can look and say, hmm, start id. That's the id sound. That might be a very helpful way to think about these words. Read the verb first and then think about it in the past tense because we know there's three different sounds that it could make. Let's look at this word. The verb here is smile. I smile. Yesterday, I smiled. It's not smile id. It's not smile t. It's smiled. And here we have help. The verb is help. Today I help my friends. Yesterday I helped my friends. I already know that the past tense for help is helped by thinking about it. But sometimes when I look at it, it tricks me because I want to say helped because I see that ed there. So think about the verb first, read the verb, and then put it in the past tense. I hope that helps you guys out. Let's read some more past tense verbs together. Lift, lifted. Repeat after me. Lift, lifted. Yell, yelled. Walk, walked. Jump, jumped. Stop, stopped. Listen carefully to the sound you hear at the end. I'm going to read them one more time. These ones all have that id sound. Start started, lift, lifted. These two have the d sound. Smile, smiled. Yell, yelled. In all of these words, they actually have the t sound at the end, even though it looks like ed. Help, Helped. Walk, walked. Jump, jumped. Stop, stopped. That was some good practice. I hope that helps you guys out. Next, we've got a story to read in our Green Fern Zoo Reader. Today's story is called 
River Otters. Chapter 10, River Otters, is on page 56. Before we start, let's look at some words we're going to come across today. These all have the double L sound. Remember, when we see two of the same letter, we only hear it once. Hill. Allen. Well. I see Allen has a capital A, so I think it's going to be the name of something. Or a person. These have that d sound. Webbed. Lined. Some words with er. River. Otter. Summer. Winter. Things are moving around on me over here. And some tricky words. Down. There. Do. And two syllable words. Remember, we want to chunk them when there's two syllables. Al, ix, alex. Ag, nas, agnes. Web, ing, webbing. Gam, per, scamper. Those two have capital A's too, so maybe those are names of more people in this story today. Next, I've got some vocabulary words for our story about river otters. The first vocabulary word is otter. Otter is an animal with brown fur that lives near and in water. Webbed. Webbed means connected with a thin amount of skin. So if you think about the webbed feet on a duck, they have skin between their toes, kind of. Scamper. Scamper means to hurry or run. Den. A den is an animal's home. Bark. This bark is the outer layer of a tree. Moss. Moss is a small green plant that feels soft when you touch it. Webbed paws. Those are toes or fingers that are connected by a thin amount of skin, just like we talked about webbed. We're going to read this story about river otters to learn about river otters and what they like to eat. Let's head over to the story. Read along with me if you can. River otters. What river otters like to do. Do you like to run and jump? Do you like to chase your pals? Do you like to splash in the pool in the summer? Do you like to slide down hills in the winter? Well, if you do like to do those things, you would make a good otter. You can see three of our river otters on the rock. Alex, Alan, and Agnes. That's Alex up on top of Alan. And the last one is Agnes. So if you look in the picture, there's three river otters. And I was right, those were names because they had capital A's. The caption says, river otters sitting on the rock by a side of the river. What river otters look like? Otters have short, strong legs with webbed paws. Check out those webbed paws. And sharp claws. The webbing helps the otters swim fast and get their food. River otters hunt for fish frogs, and crabs. River otter homes. When it is time for bed, the river otters scamper to their den. They have nests on land that are lined with grass, moss, and bark. And the caption to this picture of this river otter here 
says river otters have short legs with webbed paws and short claws. So if you look, you can see their legs are very short. Now we do have some questions for this story today. Let's see what we've got. What words would you use to describe river otters? Hmm. I want you to come up with some words of your own that you would use to describe those river otters. I would say that they're furry. They looked like they had some fur. I would say they are fast because they talked about swimming fast and playful because they were started off saying how much they love to play. Number two, where do river otters live? They live by rivers and nests on land that are lined with that grass, moss, and bark. What do they like to eat? Do you remember? fish, frogs, and crabs. Did you get all three? What other animal have we learned that likes to play a lot? Hmm, there was another animal that really liked to play in one of our stories. It was the, it was the chimp. If you remember that, great memory, kiss your brain. What other animal like to spend time on both water and land? Hmm, that's a tricky one. It was the puffin, that bird we learned about. If you remember that, kiss your brain twice. Mwah. Mwah. You guys are so smart. Next, I want you to work on page 21.1, .1, the chapters for the chapter questions for this story. So right here is what the page looks like. Make sure when there's a lot of lines like this, you're writing a full sentence. What do river otters like to do? River otters like to use the question to write your answer. Number two, you don't need to, or three, but number four, you will need to use the question to write your answer. I want full sentences, capital letters, and periods. You guys are first graders, you can do it. All right, and last but not least, we've got to work on that draft. So yesterday, we did our planning. So I put a check mark next to plan. Today, we've got a draft. We've got to start writing. I'm going to type this up on a piece of paper. So I've got our little plan down here in the corner so you can see it. And I'm going to turn this into sentences. So I'm going to make myself a sentence box here. And then I'm going to turn this into sentences. Yesterday, I mentioned that something always has to be at the top to tell about what our, we're writing. Our title. What is our title going to be? Our title's going to be grapes because that is what we're writing about. So I'm going to put my title here right in the middle. Grapes. When I start to write a paragraph, the first sentence is always indented. Say the word indented. That just means that there's a little space before I start. So I'm gonna put a little space there before I actually start writing. See how it's not all the way over? There's a little bit of space. You'll do the same thing for your writing. So I wanna start by saying what I'm talking about. I will describe grapes. 
I don't need to capitalize grapes because it's not a name, but I do need to capitalize the I because it's the beginning of my sentence. After that, we're going to start to describe the grapes using the chart that we already made. So let's work together to write this first paragraph. If you ever need help with a word, we can look back at our tricky word list. If it's something that we already know is a tricky word, you can just look at that list and find that word to write down. We can use our strategies to help sound something out because remember, this is a draft. In our last page, we can edit and change anything or fix anything that needs to be fixed or rewritten. So we have our title. We have our first sentence indented telling us what we're going to write about. Next, let's start to write about grape. Each sentence is going to just follow the sentence before. So I'm not going to go down to the next line yet. I'm going to keep writing until I run out of space on this line and then I will go to the next one. So that's what we're gonna practice doing with our paragraphs. Don't go to the next line until you've run out of space. Make sure there's enough space between your words, but don't leave a lot of space at the end if you can still fit some more in there. So we know that grapes, and we use our eyes, we're gonna say the word look, And we said they looked round and green. And then a period because that's the end of my thought. It's the end of my sentence. Grapes look, my sense is my eyes, round and green. If you had another description for what they looked like, you can add one more sentence here or you can add some more words if you wanted to add purple. I know we talked about they can be purple sometimes. The next part is going to say what they sound like. So we said popping sound. That was what was in our chart. So grapes. Let's say make a popping sound. And I'm copying that right off my chart, popping sound. Grapes make a popping sound. If you have something else, a different word to describe what they sound like, you can put that there. Next, our sense of taste. We said grapes can taste sweet, tart. I think grapes taste sweet, so I'm going to use the word sweet. Again, I'm going to capitalize grapes because it's the beginning of a sentence. Grapes taste. Let's sound that out. T a t and then I know because that was a long A, I need an E at the end of the word taste. That silent E is what makes the A say its name. So grapes taste sweet. And the word sweet is right down here. I'm just copying it off of my chart. Next, we have our sense of touch. That would be how they feel. So again, I'm going to write the word grapes with a capital G. Grapes feel. And we said squishy. We said we wanted to add squishy to that. So let's say grapes feel smooth and let's sound out squishy. Qu Q U says squ e That's going to be S H. Squish. E. Hmm. I know that that's a Y, so I'm going to put a Y here. But you might have thought it's an E. That's okay. We can always fix that in our final draft if you spell something wrong. 
So gra grapes feel smooth and squishy. End of my sentence, so I'm going to add a period. We said they didn't have a smell, so we don't need to write anything there, but we do need a concluding sentence. Your concluding sentence is going to have your subject, what we're writing about, in it. So we were talking about grapes. What can we say about grapes as a concluding sentence? Something that you know about grapes? Do you like to snack on grapes? We can say grapes are good snacks because I like to snack on grapes. Grapes are good snack. This has a CK snack. Good snack. So there's my paragraph. I want you to write this paragraph. If you have different words you want to use, you can do that. If you had a different word for any of your senses, you can put a different word in there. If you want a different concluding sentence. And for now, if your spelling of your words is not perfect, that is okay because we will fix that when we do our editing. So go ahead and write this if you need to pause here to write it. Go ahead and do that. After you're done writing, there's a page that I want you to look at. So it's after 21.1 in your packet. It's called 21.2. And this says check the draft step by step. So when your draft is complete and you're done writing those sentences, I want you to look at this checklist and make sure that you have all of these things. Number one said check that the name of the thing is there. Did you write grapes? Yes? Check mark. Check that you described what it looks like. Make sure that you use the word look and wrote about that. If you did, check mark there. Check that you described the feel sound, and taste. If you wrote all three of those things, check mark there. Number four, check that you ended with a fun fact or if you like the thing that we're talking about. So you can, that's your concluding sentence. You have to have a concluding sentence. Check that off. Next, for number five, your capital and your lowercase letters capital letters at the beginning of a sentence or if there's a name of something and those are the only two times they should be capital lowercase for the rest of your letters check that put a check mark if you think yours is good punctuation did you put periods at the end of your sentences or if it was exciting an exclamation point or if you ended with a question a question mark Check that off when you know it's good. And then number seven, check that the words are spelled well. So for this part, you can ask an adult to check your words so that you can have the correct spellings when you write your final copy. So check the words with an adult and then check that off when you are all set. That's the last thing I've got for you today. You guys have been working so hard. I can't wait to read your stories. I'm sure that you came up with some fun and different words to use to describe grapes. Great work, and I will see you tomorrow.